In the case of Philip Morris, USA versus Williams, is the facts here are the widow of Jesse Williams, a heavy cigarette smoker, brought a claim for negligence and deceit against Philip Morris, the manufacturer of Marlboro, the brand of cigarettes, the brand that Williams was smoking. The jury found the death caused by smoking, well, because he probably got lung cancer, and that Williams smoked in significant part because he felt it was safe to do so. So this is going to show you that he smoked a lot and he didn't realize that there was a lot of dangers to it and he thought it was safe and nobody really told him otherwise so he just thought that it was all right. And Philip knowingly and falsely led him to believe that this was the correct ass assumption. So he was thought and told that it was okay to do so so nobody really influenced him to stop smoking they just made him keep doing it so therefore the jury found him guilty of deceit and awarded 79.5 million in punitive damages in addition to the economic and non-economic compensatory damages the jury was given instructions as follows punitive damages are not awarded against a defendant to punish misconduct and deter other misconduct and are not intended to compensate the plaintiff or anyone else for damages caused by the defendant's conduct also, some other facts that I found that he was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day for 50 years and unable to quit. So, by then, he was obviously addicted to the tobacco and didn't want to get off of it. And he was diagnosed with lung cancer and died six months later. So, obviously, he didn't have a chance to do chemotherapy, radiation, or whatever they do for lung cancer. I'm not really sure. But he obviously didn't have a chance unless it was already progressed so much that he did not have a chance to survive. And he argued that there was no risk. Like, no one knew that there was risk to smoking because back then you really didn't hear about people dying from lung cancer and stuff. Because everybody smoked, so nobody knew that there was a real issue about it until this case. In the case Philip Morris USA versus Williams is that the issue here is does the due process clause permit a jury to base an award in part upon the desire to punish the defendant for harming persons not before the court. So this really here is going to show you as should somebody get punished for not telling somebody that smoking is bad for you. It's really a 50 50 situation here because it honestly could go both ways because first of all the person that is trying to receive the money here should not have been smoking three packs a day for 50 years i don't care if it was the best thing for you in the entire world that is still a little insane to smoke three packs of cigarettes a day especially for 50 years and obviously he must have not went to the doctors enough morris because he would have found the cancer sooner and maybe he could have got treatment and got better and then he wanted to maybe stop smoking and then he could have got better but no he continued to smoke for 50 years straight so it honestly can go both ways also marlboro should have put out a warning saying that there are certain chemicals in here that you need to be careful about smoking because you could get lung cancer and stuff Really, like, lung cancer and serious um, issues coming from smoking probably did not start occurring or in America or around the world. Maybe 20 years ago it started because, like, smoking was very popular in this, ooh, back, way back when and mo really in the 90s. Like, people could still smoke in schools and stuff. It was crazy. So, I could see both ways. I think that, honestly, that there should be more ads out of how harmful smoking is, even though people sometimes won't listen. But I think it is a major issue, and lung cancer is a big deal. It's one of the most deadliest cancers that is out there. And I think that there needs to be a little clause or something in there showing how bad it is, and that people could be saved from this. I know that smoking is bad for you but people are still gonna, gonna gonna continue to do it but it would be nice if there was some more like warnings and stuff so maybe this could like help people like quit easier but i don't know like i think they should get an award the people that lost their loved one in a way because there was no really like dangers shown but then in a way 
you shouldn't smoke three cigarettes, three packs of cigarettes a day for 50 years straight. Like, that's a little bit of a issue and a problem that needed to be resolved by some therapy or something. I'm not really sure what they do for that, but... So, really, the issue here is should they get awarded the money or not? So, we'll have to find out and see. In the case of Philip Morris USA versus Williams, the decision bounced back and forth multiple times. The original decision was awarded to Williams with punitive damages of $79.5 million and compensatory damages of 821000 This was found to be grossly excessive by the trial court of Oregon. They reduced the amounts to approximately 512000 for compensatory and $32 million for the punitive. Upon further review, the Oregon Court of Appeals reinstated the original $79.5 million punitive damages. They did this based off of guideposts uh, that were established in BMW of North America versus Gore. The U.S. Supreme Court vacated the appeals court decision through granting a certiorari. The Court of Appeals ignored this setup, though. Uh, they stuck with their finding of reinstating the $79.5 million punitive damage. They said this because it was based upon evidence of similar conduct to others, even those not party to a lawsuit when awarding punitive of damage. What this means is that even the parties not involved in the case should be awarded punitive damages concerning events such as occurred in this case regarding tobacco use. This decision was appealed by Morris, and he appealed it, they, the company appealed it to the U.S. Supreme Court. In March of 2009, that this Morris lost. The U.S. Supreme Court affirmed the Court of Appeals decision by withdrawing the writ of certiorari. This ultimately showed that the statute created by the Oregon Court of Appeals was the correct one, and the $79.5 million in punitive damages remained. Originally, the Supreme Court of the United States had decided that the Oregon Supreme Court had applied the wrong constitutional standard in their decision of Philip Morris's appeal and that a new trial may be needed. This decision was based off of a couple of precedents made at BMW of America Incorporated versus Gore and State Farm Mutual Automobile Insurance Company versus Campbell. These two cases outlined procedures for determining punitive damages. In BMW of North America v. Gore, the court stated that punitive damages must be reasonably related to the reprehensibility of the act and should not include sanctions or penalties for criminal conduct. State Farm Mutual Automobile Insurance Company v. Campbell stated that the practice of setting punitive damages to single-digit ratios to the compensatory damages, while not binding or required, is a good way to help the jury decide on a reasonable number Meanwhile, in Philip Morris, USA v. Williams, the punitive damages to compensatory damages ratio was almost 100 to 1. This decision was made in February of 2007. Then in March of 2009, the decision was dismissed along with the writ of cert on the grounds that the writ was granted improvidently or it was granted when it should not have been granted. In the case Philip Morris, USA v. Williams, the dissent is... Justice Stevens compares punitive damages in both criminal and civil cases, and as their purpose is to punish and dissuade the defendant from acting in the same fashion. It is appropriate to take into account other harms. The dissent also compares this case to punishing someone for throwing a bomb and murdering hundreds of innocent bystanders, as the jury can absolutely, absolutely take into account the number of people injured when determining an appropriate punishment. Justin Th Justice Thomas also dissented, pointing out that the Constitution does not put a limit on damages, only requires that a defendant receive notice in a hearing. In addition, Justice Ginsburg dissents, arguing that the entire purpose of punitive damages is to punish, and therefore the jury should absolutely take into account the extent of the harm and how many div individuals were harmed. So there are actually a lot of ethical problems involved with this case. Uh, Philip Morris USA, the defendants, manufactured the Marlboro cigarettes that Jesse preferred to smoke. And it's claimed that Jesse smoked them, assuming that they were safe. 
And it also was claimed and was later validated by a jury that Philip Morris USA led Jesse to believe uh, that this assumption was correct, which ultimately led to his death. Um, you know, Philip Morris USA didn't just lie to Jesse. A huge company like that doesn't just go up to one individual and say, hey, Jesse, it's safe to smoke cigarettes. You should buy some more. Uh, they, they say that in a large statement to a bunch of people. And so they lied to a lot of people and a lot of people are still struggling with addiction with cigarettes because of, you know, a good portion of them because they initially believed that it was safe to do it. And so to say that this falls under the definition of reprehensible is a little bit of an understatement. If you ask me, it's pretty deplorable. Um, but one thing that you have to consider is that this case isn't a criminal prosecution case. This is a civil suit. And so the object of this isn't to punish the individual necessarily for the criminal act that they did if, you know, it, it is a criminal act. Um, but it is at least for the punitive damages, which is the main focus of this suit for this appeal, um, particularly is that it is supposed to dissuade these people from re uh, repeating the behavior um, and, and not to punish them for what they did to people that aren't a part of the suit or aren't parties. And so this $79.5 million uh, punitive damages, that, that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty good punishment for what they did to everyone. But to punish them for what they did to one person by bringing them to bankruptcy is not exactly um, warranted. You know, it really, it sucks what happened to him because of this lie, but um, the object isn't to destroy them because of what they did to him, but it's to dissuade them from lying in the future. So a hefty fine is warranted, but, you know, taking everything that they have as far as assets goes and giving them to this one person as opposed to spreading it out to all of the families that are affected by it is really just not a good idea.